we pray for our uh, church family members. We got sickness and and uh, in the church, and, and I know that if the church come together and pray, that God will move. Amen. We pray in unity, God will move. There's so much sickness and death going around, so we will never to forget to to pray for us. We don't want to have that that mentality. We just pray for me and mine. We are all uh, one body in Christ if we accept the blood of Jesus. Thank you uh, this morning again in our lesson, a great lesson this morning, Enduring False Charges. Uh, this is coming from the book of Job, a very uh, familiar book. And every time we read it, we, we bring out some things and that we may have not, God will build, give new birth to some things that we may have overlooked the first time. Enduring false charges. To endure something is having to deal with false charges, false accusations, false accusing, people accusing you of things that that uh, you have no idea about. And, and James talked about that, that viper, that tongue, and how poor it is and how it can kill and how it can be on how it cannot be tamed. And that is one of the things that we as Christians should learn to do is not get into that judgmental mentality. Mm -hmm. Why this lesson matter I'm read this with goes that people tend to rationalize why bad things happen. How do people respond when they are faced with tragedy, natural disaster, <coughs> birth defect, <coughs> atrocious crime, etc. Job remained faithful to God after several tragic events occurred in his life, even while his friends questioned God's justice and Job innocent. Now, every one of us is familiar with Job, the story of Job, how Job had everything that's happened to him, uh, just one thing happened after another. Job lost his family, he, he, he lost his, his finances. And, and, and he was stricken with bad health. And all of this happened at one time. Mm -hmm. And then now Job is, is going through, and you read where Job had got to a low pray, uh, place of depression. The Bible said that Job even cursed the day that he was born. Mm -hmm. And Job is known to pen said that man is born of a woman, but for a few days, and they are filled with trouble. So Job had an experience of how trouble can fall on any of us at any time. Okay? We want us to begin with uh, Job, the eighth chapter, someone reading verse 1 through 7 for us. Then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, How long wilt thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Doth God pervert judgment, or doth the Almighty judge? Doth he not make all things to be? If thy children have sinned against him, and he have cast them away for their transgression, if thou wouldst seek unto God be times, and make thy supplication unto to the Almighty. If thou were pure, if thou art pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee, and make thee make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Though thou <clears throat> though thy beginning was small, yet thy letter should end. Sorry, um, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Amen. Thank you, Lon. Now, we understand that if you could picture, I love to kind of picture what's going on. Job had lost his children. Uh, he had lost his wealth. And Job is now stricken with spoil, the Bible says, all over his body. Job is sitting in his yard sackcloth and ashes morning and his friends come up and sat with him for a while and the Bible said they sat there a long time before they began to say anything mm -hmm. and I've learned this and I tell people all the time when they're going through something a lot of times people want to run over there and say things that really won't help them somebody lost their loved one their family, their mother, their father and and then you go and ask, what can I do? Well, you can't bring them back. So you at that point, that's what they want. So sometimes, what I'm saying is, sometimes I learn that some of the best thing that we can do is just be there. Just be there. 
You don't have to say a word. Just I just want you to know I'm here. But now where they messed up at, they came there and they sat with Job. And they began to talk about his situation. Now the lessons say, we're going to look at the verse and we're going to break it down. It says, the rift between Job and his friend expanded after Bildad's first two speeches. Bildad wasted no time in blasting Job, pressing claim to be innocent of sin. Bildad bluntly accused Job of being self-righteous windbag. In other words, you just talking. Mm -hmm. you just, you, you've been talking something, but you know you, you don't live what you talk. <laughs> He's a, his approach was analytical and objective with no room for compromise. His theology accounts for only two kinds of people, the blameless before God and those who conceal their sinfulness. He concluded that God's response to these people was to bless the upright and afflict the sinner. Now this would build that uh, opinion. Now, before we go in, I, I, when I got up this morning, I was getting ready. And this scripture came to my mind and I, I jotted down the scripture that came to my mind, but I had to go back and read the scripture before and the scripture behind it. This is Galatians, the sixth chapter, uh, verse five, six, and seven. He said, for every man shall bear his own burden. That's five. Six said, let them that is taught in the word communicate unto them, unto him that teaches in all good things. And then seven, this is the one that we people will remember and, and will hit you with. They said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, what I'm saying is people will use that scripture on folks and not understanding what content that Paul wrote to the church at Galatia. If you're going through hard times, the first thing somebody going to say, oh, in the Bible says, man sow, whatsoever man sow is that well, that shall he also reap. Well, the Bible does say that. But let's make sure the content right. is right for what we're saying. Okay? Now, if you look at what I just read, verse 6, Paul was talking about let them communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. He's talking about teaching. So if I teach falsely, I'm only receive false response. Is that right? Just look at it now. So we got to understand that a lot of times we want to throw scripture at people and that scripture is nothing true to what the situation is. I just want to put that out. Now, in verse 1 it said, Then answer Bildad the Shudonite and said, How long will thou speak these things? And how long shall the word of thy mouth be like a strong wind? He accused Job of being a windbag. What he's saying, they send there and say, Job, you, you, you just need to come clean. It is no way all of this could happen to you if you were a perfect and upright man. It's just no way it could happen. Okay? That's what they're saying. See, we had to be, be uh, quiet. I'm just going to say quiet. Because we can go there and attack people because they're going through something and never know what's going on in heaven. Okay? They didn't know what had went on. They just looked at what they saw. Job now is one of the richest men in the land of us. Family. Wealth. All of this happened to Job in a little span of time. He said now, in, in verse 3, Bildad said, Does God pervert judgment? And doeth the Almighty pervert justice? He's saying that God is a God of judgment and justice. Now, Bildad, confidence in the justice of God is the idea that Job could only receive his trouble from God as punishment for his sin. That's what he's saying. You get punished for your sin. I, I, I like I, I like what uh, what God has said. 
And and what I said now, Bill Dad and his other friend, two friends, they sitting there and they are accusing Job that the reason why you're going through this is because of your sin. Mm -hmm. You're windbag, you're talking, but you're not practicing what you preach. Mm -hmm. Now, people say that, you know, you, you ought to practice what you preach. <laughs> Barry White said it even better when he was talking about some love. <laughs> Barry White said you ought to practice what you preach. But he wasn't talking about it. He was talking about some love. Mm -hmm. See, see, I understand Barry White content, and I gotta understand what he's saying here. Now in Job 2 and 3, and that's why we said in Job, we go back to Job 2 and 3. The uh Job 2nd chapter 3. He said now. And the Lord said unto Satan, Had thou considered my servant Job, there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fears God, ensures evil, and still he holds fast his integrity, although now thou moveth me against him, to destroy him. Now, in other words, God's saying, you want me to carry him through this for no reason. Hmm. Reason I said that, now, we I don't want us to get into that mindset of just because we see people go through something, it's because of sin. All suffering is not because of sin. Okay? Well, somebody, oh, wait a minute now, we think this. All suffering is not because of sin. The Bible tells us that our trials come to do what? Make us strong. Make us strong. So sometimes we're going through something. God's got a plan, and God's plan is that we'll be strong at the end. See now, Job going through this, and first thing, oh, they must have did something. Oh, ain't no way all that can happen. And never forget that the Bible tells us that our trials come to make us strong. Don't you know Job was going through a trial? He was going through a trial period here with all this happening. Now, and then build that in verse 4. He said, if thy children had sinned against him, and he had cast them away for their sin. Now, it's it bad enough when, when, when people will attack you. But not only did they attack Job, he went there and told your children were sinners. Mm -hmm. He said, God put them away because they were sinners. In other words, you sitting up here as a windbag acting like you all this and that, but you're a windbag. And they look at that, there's no way that he think about man. But the Bible said, man look where? Out of appearance. God looks at the heart. Okay? Now, and he said, if thy children have sinned against him, and he cast them away for their transgression, for their sin, he said, if thou would seek unto God betime and make thy supplication to the Almighty. In other words, they're saying, Job, you need to quit just out here being a windbag and just tell the truth and repent. Mm -hmm. you, ever, you ever had that happen? Yes, sir. I'd, have, I'd have had people just, just stop talking to me because of what they heard. Mm -hmm. They had a prejudgmental mind mm -hmm. and they just, you know, they just stopped talking. But I don't worry about that because I'm more concerned about what God sees than what man said. My brother said it best. With people, every time we even come close to the mark, they're going to take it higher. Mm -hmm. Because they never want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Oh, he about to get there. I'm going to take it a little higher. Mm -hmm. So now, we ought to not get that mindset because we never know what God's plan is for each and every one of us out here. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Now, he said, now, if thou were pure, and upright, surely now he would await for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosper. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill Dad didn't mind pulling back the punches. He told Job in that verse, he said, Job, if you were really pure and upright like you said, God would even come through for you now. Okay, he's saying that you're not as pure and upright and you claim to be. Mm. The this man, you look at Job, he already out there. And I, I can imagine, and, and I like, and I like this here, that the Bible said that when they heard what Job was going through, 
They just came to visit. You ever seen that sometimes? Now, don't, don't think every time people come to you, they're coming for good. I heard, oh, oh, what you call, had something to happen. I'm going to go and find out what happened with it. And when they get there, they're not there to support you with going through all your calamity and all your suffering. They're there just to, just to have a judgmental attitude. Okay? And that's now they just showed up. He said, now, and then he said, if you was pure. And, and, and God, now, he, uh, if that were pure and upright, surely now, he would wait for you. And make a habitation of thy righteousness prosper. God will bring you through this. That's what he's saying. He said, though your beginning was small, yet the latter shall be greater. Mm -hmm. Now, here, <laughs> Bill Dad was talking to him, but really Bill Dad didn't know, but he was right. Job latter days, they're going to be better than the beginning. Because the Bible said God is going to give him all of that and more. Now, he said, Bill Dad was like everyone else in this drama. Unable to see the drama having this behind the scene in heaven. Mm. Okay, what I mean there, Bill Dad was looking at what he saw. That Job going through all of this, lost his children, lost his, his wealth. He Now he's sick. He's seeing what he's seeing. But now, remember what I read to you? In Job, the second chapter, where God said, have you considered my servant Job? Mm -hmm. A perfect and upright man. Now, we understand when people think perfect, there's none perfect but the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now that perfect means a little different than what we think perfect is. He's, he ensured evil. He kept his integrity. In other words, no matter what Job went through, Job did not give up on God. He had some bad days. The Bible said that he cursed the day he was born. If you read that, Job had a low place of, of depression. Okay? But he, when he kept his integrity, meaning he still believed God. You know, sometimes when we go through something, we'll get to the point where we didn't thank God and forgot all about it. And never, we never think about what the word of God said and our trials come to make us strong. You know, we never think about what God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We, we forget about all these things because we're looking at the trouble. We're looking at the, the issue. We're looking at the problem instead of looking at God. We should never lose our focus because, I, I get, trust me on this, when we go through that, we're going to endure some, some criticism. Let something happen to you. You want to have more people trying to figure out why you're going through it than you have people trying to help you now. Amen. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, let's look at verse 8 and 9. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, prepare ourselves to the search of their, of their fathers. For we are but yesterday and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee, in other words, I was their heart? Okay, thank you. Nice. Now it said one contributing factor to build that faulty theology was likely his focus on traditionalism. He was focused on traditionalism. Elasphus, the first to address Job, support his view with his personal experience. Contrastingly, Bill Dad based his counsel on the experience of past generations. He was a moralist and traditionalist who resist changes. Bill Dad advised Job to look on to the wisdom of those who live longer and had more time to observe the experience and experience life. Well, what are you saying? In Deuteronomy, fourth chapter and the 32nd verse, this is the tradition that Bildad was looking at. Mm -hmm. He said, for ask now of the days that are past. Days that are past or what? Behind us, right? He said, which were before thee since the day that God created man upon the earth. He said, ask now from one side of heaven unto the other. 
whether there have been any such thing as this great thing is or has been heard like it is. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that, Bill Dad is saying in the past, God punished for sin. God rewarded, and then God punished. Mm -hmm. He said, you look back at what I used to be. Traditionally, and you know what I, I find out a lot of times when people want to attack you with, with false charges and false accusations, whatever it is, a lot of times they're going to go back to old stuff. Mm -hmm. They're going to go back to old stuff. They, they forget the, 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 the fact that we now, God had paid the price on the cross. And I don't care how bad we were yesterday. If we ask God to forgive us for yesterday, we step into a brand new day today. Okay? We keep that mindset. If not, we can never go forward because people are going to always take you back. They're going to try to keep you back. If they always pulling you back, that means you're not going forward. You, you the change, but they want to tell you how you used to be. You, you have some things, tragedy happening in your life. They're going to tell you, you, you suffer for a call. They're going to tell you, a man, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. But you need to read Galatians a little more. Mm. See what Paul was talking about. Lord. See, we take that and we'll ball it up hard and we'll throw it and want to knock it down with it and really don't know what it is ourselves. Mm. Okay? Now, that's what Bill Daddy, he's saying. So, I'll inquire, in other words, check it out. I pray you of the former age, how it used to be. And prepare thyself to search of the fathers. Mm -hmm. And then he said, For we are but of yesterday. And now nothing because our day is upon the earth as they are the shadow. In Psalms 35 and 9, David wrote, He said, Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth. And my age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill Dad said, For we are but yesterday and know nothing because our days upon the earth are that the shadow. What happened with the shadow? It fades away, it leaves. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. As a shadow. You see your shadow one time like, hey, my shadow ain't out of shadow. <laughs> and sometimes a day it'll follow you all day long. But it said at some time that shadow gonna appear and it's gonna disappear. He said, for, but, for we are but of yesterday and know nothing because our days upon the earth are as a shadow. Mm -hmm. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee and utter word out of thy mouth? He telling Job, Job, your life is just a shadow. You're going to sit here and, and, and act like you ain't had, did nothing wrong. All of this happened in your life. You lost your children. You lost your family. You, 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 you lost your finance. You, you lost all of that. And now you're sick. And, 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 and your days are a number. Your days are numbers. That's what he's saying. Your days are numbers. He said, you ought to learn from that. He said, what? Shall they not teach you and tell thee and other words out of their mouth, out of their heart? You ought to come out, he said. He called them a windbag that you don't know. You're just talking, talking loud and saying nothing. You, 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 you're, talking, you, you're talking something you're not living. But you know what? They didn't, he did not know the conversation that God had in heaven about, <coughs> about Job. That's it. People a lot of time want to want to throw rocks and cover us up and all that and never know what plan God has for us. Mm -hmm. The Bible said God said he had a plan for us. Yeah. Now, let's look at verse 20 through 22. Behold, God will not cast away a church man, neither will help the evil doers, till he fill thy mouth with laughter and thy lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to night. Okay, thank you, nice. Erroneous. 
an unsupported ideal about God lead to incorrect assumption, incorrect assumption about him, how he relates to humankind. Bill Dad did not possess accurate knowledge of how God justice applied to Job. He didn't know. And, and that's why it, it, it is important to us. One thing that we ought to know and, and apply to our life, the Bible tell us to judge not. Amen. Whatever judgment that you meet out, it'll be meted back to you. Amen. Now that just is plain as those lights up there. We know what that means. He said, Judge not. Amen. But still, we are across that line. Amen. We're across that line. And, 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 and we got to stand before God. We got to stand before each other. Amen. We got to stand before God. Amen. So the thing is not about me finding your fault and you finding my fault. Mm -hmm. It's about us keeping our integrity in God. Amen. Knowing that when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Which is Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't have to stay in that because he had already took all of that to the cross. Okay, and now he's saying that uh, we must apply what we know in truth. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like this. I'm, I'm going to say it this way. If I went and bought me a suit, I can't say my brother Robert tried on. You know why? We different side. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want you to get my point. He gonna come back and say, "Here's suit." When I get that suit, the coat too big, the pants too big, they too long. It don't fit me. Why? Because I didn't do it myself. My point is, is that we first got to try to take God's word and apply it to ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. It got to fit ourselves. I can't make it fit nobody else. I got to use it on me for the fit. I can try it on somebody else all day long and, and I still walk out here sad. Because I never put it on myself. See now, Bill Dad did not understand. He said, behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoer. Psalms 37 and 24 said, though he fall, he should not utterly be utterly cast down, for the Lord uphold him with his hand. Mm -hmm. Not with the man hand, but with God's hand. Amen. Now, accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior does not give us an exempt from trouble. They're going to come. Mm -hmm. They're going to come. Just like when Jesus was uh, uh, acknowledged, when John baptized him on the Jordan River, as soon as he come up out of the water and God acknowledged him as my beloved son who I'm well pleased with, what happened? Lay it in the wilderness. Soon as we want to stand for God and do what's right, get ready. <clears throat> Pack your bag because you're going to be led through some hardship. You're going to do some things, but you got to understand this. We got to keep, stay with God. He said now, he said, though he fall, he should not be utterly cast down, for the Lord uphold him with his hand, God hand. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. He said, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in this Thessalonians, they praying for the church. They're getting ready to leave. Mm -hmm. And he said that they pray that God will guard your body, your spirit, and preserve you. Now, what y'all say? We go to Thessalonians, we in Job. It's the word of God. When we come to that relationship with God, accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're sealed to the day of redemption. That's right. Okay? Do that seal mean that we won't go through something? Yeah, we'll go through something. Mm -hmm. You can be sealed and sometimes when they used to can something, you didn't want to open that seal because you let something get in there and, 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 and contaminate a little bit. We sealed to the day of redemption, but we still going to have some trial and tribulation. And then the time they come, don't let them make a walk back. Mm -hmm. 
Even everything that Job did, and you think now they showed up, they were friends. I like this here. When you know your enemy, you can't let your enemy get close to you. But then you got to watch them one so-called friend. Amen. They came and never said a comforting word to Job. All they did was try to tell Job, Job, you sitting up here acting like you ain't done nothing. You've done all this. There's no way this would have happened to you if you had been a perfect and upright man. Amen. But as I said, they didn't know what had happened in heaven. When Job, God allowed, God allowed Satan to do Job this way. His trial was coming to make it strong. We go through something. We should not lose hope. We should not lose our faith in God when we face these things. Mm. He said now, and then 21, till he fill your, thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. What we need to do is just continue to pray and continue well doing. Mm -hmm. I, I know with me sometimes when I went through the hardship and, and, and the scripture that comes, don't grow weary and well doing. Don't grow weary in well doing. He said, You reap if you faint not. Amen. You reap if you don't give up. Amen. Now, that, that, that scripture there alone, when you're facing some hardship, that scripture alone ought to bump you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know? Because a lot of times when we're going through, the first thing we want to do is give up. Amen. But the scripture tells us, Don't grow weary in well doing. You reap if you faint not. Okay? Now it says, Build that. Was correct in saying that God is entirely just. He was right. But his reasoning and application of the truth were grounded, was not grounded in sound doctrine. Observation and collective wisdom of the past formed his belief system. His belief system was that if you do bad, you're going to get bad. That's right. If you do good, you're going to get good. That would build their belief system. And, and, and like I said, there are a lot of times we'll take a scripture and when we, we want to use one, let's, let's make sure we read it. Don't, don't just pluck out that little part that we want. Amen. We need to read before it and read after it Amen. to get understanding what is being discussed, who is being discussed for, what application it is for that word. Because you find in that Bible that some scripture is identical in, in words. They the same. But if you look at it, it's a different time. It was saying for a different time. So when we talk about when we're going to holler, the Bible says you're going to reap what you sow. The Bible does say that. <laughs> but then when I read it, he's talking about some teaching. He's talking about some teaching. Now he said, they that hate thee shall be clothed with shame. And the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. Now, why was he saying this? They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame. As I said earlier, we're never to give up when we're facing trials. Because God's going to vindicate. And he said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He's going to vindicate us. Our safe net is that when we know what God's words say, we act upon it. If we're saved, God did not save us to be a judge of all people. Amen. That's not why he saved us. Amen. If we're saved, we're saved to be a light Amen. and not a judge. Amen. Okay, so we don't want to get that twisted. Let's not get that twisted. Amen. God is the only judge. That it said we're going to stand before God. You're not going to stand before me. Amen. You're not going to stand before the pastor. Amen. We're going to stand before God. Amen. So when you go to court, who are you stand before? You stand before the judge. Down here. Mm -hmm. But up there, that great white throne, we're going to stand before God. Amen. So we don't need to judge. Amen. When we we're, we're come to knowledge that we're saved, our mission is to be a light. Amen. Not to false accuse. Amen. Not to say why somebody going through this or why somebody going through that. Because we never know. Amen. We never know. Amen. Okay, Pastor, we're going to let you come and have our final words. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank God for uh, his word. That is strength, brother and sister, that may come in this morning. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a wave of hope mm -hmm. that lies in us 
when we read these types of lesson, it's built up us on the inside. Mm -hmm. That things that us a picture taken, we look at, we first look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we learn that if we're gonna grow, we got to be humble enough to hear when the spirit talk to us. Mm -hmm. And I believe the spirit do talk to us. Amen. But, and, and, and when we see this come up on there, just be quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't want that, but if you in God and God in you, just be quiet. He, mm -hmm. He'll fight your battles for you. Amen. You you don't have to fight for righteousness. Amen. Now, the, the Bible tells us that uh, Shunanite and uh, uh, Bid, Bid Dad, he had a, he had a uh, a teaching that he had been taught mm -hmm. like we do. Mm -hmm. That if you do good, good will come back to you. You do bad, bad. And that's true. But we leave out the equation about God. That's right. God had a conversation in heaven that had already planned. Like he told me and you that God got a plan for our life. Mm -hmm. Not to harm you, but prosper you. And people, because they got something, it ain't an indication that it's God. That's right. But they use that for the people that don't have. Mm -hmm. Say, so if you get this right here, that means God is blessing you. Mm -hmm. But the saints don't study to show their self-approval. God will feed you with wisdom and knowledge in his word. Amen. But don't you try to be a God. Amen. Amen. God can work all by himself. Amen. And if you know some people are ignorant to the word and ignorant don't call nobody out of their name, just don't know. <laughs> some people don't study Amen. to know if you're going to fight Satan, we got to do it with his word. Amen. Not with your physical, physical hands. Amen. Not with that pink tornado that's in your mouth. Amen. And not with your thoughts that's not on him. You can't make it that way. We want to be a light over here at Repton. Mm -hmm. That star, the, the feast, mm -hmm. that when we walk out, that we know how to act. Amen. We not how to act in our homes, in our community, and most of all, against one another. Amen. When God said you can't be by yourself. Mm -hmm. And then when we act the other way, you lose your testimony when you try to evangelize. Amen. Mm -hmm. You try to tell people what does say the word and you don't have the power. Amen. If you study the word of God, mm -hmm. God the one that do the convicting, mm -hmm. not you. Mm -hmm. His word convict us already. Don't I got to say that. <laughs> right now, God knows every last one of us and know our ways, our hearts, mm -hmm. and everything. Amen. You can act all you want to act like mm -hmm. until the real thing in that tape plate and it, it'll show up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just as plain as that. Stand for our closing prayer. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. God has so strong Compassion, we can't point those to you. 